after two years in this container here, we are going to be upgrading my Rinka Stylus Gigantea crossed with Vanda Cerula. She is the first ever Vanda that came into the collection. That was even before the trellises were up and before the Blooming Alley was a thing. I'm excited about it because I have been seeing some active root growth. I've never given her a proper pot because I wanted to see if Semi Hydro would work with this orchid. And well, even though it's taken two years, but that is the nature of this orchid. She is an extremely slow grower. I have been observing some roots growing slowly, but steadily in the Semi Hydro setup. And the top part of the orchid, the top five leaves are showing me that this is working. And for that reason, she's coming out of the plastic and into something a little bit more representative also in semi-hydro because this orchid lives outdoors all year round even though she would prefer not to deal with five degrees celsius during my winters but needs must and she seems to be coping so i'm just gonna keep going i'm just gonna keep her outside there is no room in the inn anyway during my winters. I am a teeny, teeny, tiny bit apprehensive about this because the roots are not happy roots. My environment is not humid enough. That's why she had to go into a semi-hydroponic setup as a last ditch effort to make her happy. However, at every node that stopped and started growing again, there is a risk of popping each and every one of them off. So <laughs> let's give this a go. It looks rather messy in there with all the moss and everything, but all that is super helpful. So I'm gonna try and do it at this angle. Try and get her out. Try not to pop off what is an active growth. Yeah. Let's just make sure where the root tips are. They're down in this corner right here. There's an active one up against the corner over there. Oh, and there's more down in this little perimeter. Okay, we have a problem. A nice one. Active roots everywhere on this orchid. And suddenly it is a real problem. Just pulling her out is not an option. But it's wonderful that you're here. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I appreciate it that you have a minute to spend some time and that you chose to spend it here with me on the patio. Very much appreciated. Let's hope we do this without too much damage. Just to get her out. <laughs> look at this look at this this is the best i've ever had out of this orchid and let me tell you i have had her since 2017. <laughs> oh my i am so tempted to remove all the moss but they seem to all be working in harmony i don't want to fuss too much but i want to fuss you know what i mean i want to get old bracts off and clean her up at the base and all that fun stuff but I think we're just going to uh, <laughs> probably encounter issues and regret afterwards that we just didn't leave her alone and upcot her but you know how it is once you see something it's like why not just try and see right why not just try and see and then you really can be mad at yourself if something happens afterwards and you're like why why didn't I just leave it And of course, now I'm in the middle of something, I can't stop. So any background noise, I can't edit out. I do profoundly apologize for that. Ooh, I'm getting bolder. I'm bold with this. <laughs> she is a tough cookie. Now, while I've had some super high humidity this season in 2023, I can assure you, it is not the norm. And that you can still see with the humidity, there's been some mechanical damage and this root tried to activate and it couldn't continue. These roots were growing beautifully and they stopped as well. Ah, we see a little bit of scale damage. We'll take care of that after we put her into her new pot. Can I get this off down here? Ooh. <laughs> You'd think that a veteran orchid grower should not be apprehensive, but well, especially when an orchid after two years is doing something 
positive, you don't want to exactly, you know, ruin it. And be the one to blame. <laughs> this stem is quite something, I tell you. Got some dead roots down here that didn't quite make it. And dang, they themselves, I need my secateurs for that. That's insane. There's another little bit over there. Wow. That is such a wooden steely, incredible. Just take off some of that. And I really do want to get rid of these bracts. <laughs> she has had scale issues, so it's not as bad as it used to be. But you know what? I have a feeling that hopefully, maybe next year or in two years, oh, she's snagged. Her leaves are snagged. Okay, maybe in two years, we will actually see blooms from her again, bar any mishaps. Got to really watch those root tips there. I had her bloom once for me. And then I recognized that my climate would not accommodate this orchid when it came to having any form of humidity. She would love to have what I have had this season all the time. Hot, steamy, high temperatures all the time. That's her preference. Okay, these are old markings. I don't have to worry about them. I'm gonna wash my hands, we're gonna pot her up and call it a day. Oh, happy day. I have already crocked my pot with large lava rock so that I'm not going to be wasteful on the lecker. My semi-hydro holes are over here. So I'm going to just check and see how low I want her. And you know, as low as possible, obviously. And you see, dang. Talk about popping off roots. See how easily this happens? Oh, that is so annoying. Goodness me, this is like working with a Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga. Roots like glass. Anyway, so, focus. I do want her low in the pot. The lower she is, the better it is. And I've overdone it. While I'm trying to pot this orchid up, would you do me a favor? Please like the video, let the orchid know that her efforts are being appreciated. The fact that she is forgiving me is appreciated. Just like the video. It would boost my self-esteem as well. <laughs> and if you have not subscribed to the channel, I have certain challenges in my climate. Southern Spain sounds very romantic and ideal for orchid growing. And well, while it may be for some orchids, <clears throat> there are many orchids where that does not apply but I make do with what I've got and to some degree successfully and to some degree not. So subscribe to the channel. I would so appreciate your support. Thank you very, very much. Now I can't fill this with water as much as I would like to. So I'm going to be very, very careful with where I pour the lecker. I still have those two root tips to the left of the screen. I hope that is in shot. So my strategy here now is to come in to those root tips from the opposite side where there aren't any, while still keeping in mind I've got root tips that are coming out of the stem where my hands are. Yikes. That was a gentle, <laughs> that was gentle. Nicely rolled in, way to go. I should think about doing some bowling. <laughs> Whew, what a relief. And I'm also taking all the roots that were aerial before and putting them in media. Even if they do fail afterwards, it doesn't matter. We have active root tips and we can see now that this will work for her long-term. Oh my goodness, there's a bit of lecker in her leaf. <laughs> Oh, wow. Ooh, la la. Wow, she needs a lot of water. I'm just flushing her through. This is plain RO water. She has had a lot of fertilizer. And probably a week ago, she had a full back to fill soak. So <laughs> I'm really trying to get this orchid to cooperate or at least 
I'm trying to read her signs so that I will cooperate with her. And all the moss that I just buried in the leka, that'll grow up and around. It'll create another microclimate, which is awesome. Ta-da! That's better. Whatever the length of the video, trust me, it probably took me three times as long as the length of the video to do this. I always took a break. When I started to get apprehensive, I always stepped back just to allow my mind to settle down, not to worry, and dig deep into the experience of growing orchids, that it's not all so bad. Relax. The minute you tense up, something goes wrong. <laughs> seems to have worked. We only busted one root tip. That is pretty good going considering how brittle this orchid's roots are. There she goes. Looks much nicer. Let the moss growing begin. And I'm going to put her back where she belongs now, down in the deep south in the corner where she has been doing so, so well for the last two seasons. And there she is back in her place. I'm starting to really like the look of this corner because I do not like see-through containers. I know it's nice to see the roots grow. It's excellent in order to control where the roots are actually growing as I did with her all these years. Now we've got the confirmation. Now I can just leave her alone again and I will be following the progress of the crown as a control measure to see if she is progressing as she was before. Probably in two years, she'll let me know whether she didn't like it or whether she liked it. Let's hope for some blooms, but I'm really liking this corner because it seems like the Stamfordianum is coming back strong. Not just because the new growth is strong, but because I've got two sets of roots in there now, which is amazing. So this little corner here, very protected with a lot, a lot of bright light all the time and high humidity, yuck. This could be my new little rescue corner once these orchids get established. Anyway, I babble. I'm just relieved. It's what I do when I am relieved that something is done and not too much damage was done. I start to babble, but I don't want to waste any more of your precious time. I just need one more little moment from you, and that is to say thank you so, so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition as always, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.